Let's talk about Sony games that uh, you may have heard of, you may not have heard of, that were uh, never allowed to see the light of day, at least with a Sony sticker on them. Driver's the one that hit me first. I remember going into uh, Kelly Flock at the time, his office, he ran 989, and he says, hey, play this fucking game. Take this home for the weekend, play the game, let me know what you think. And I played it, and I came back, and I'm not saying Kelly listened to me only, and I was the one who kept Sony from having Driver. But I came back and I said, well, this is shitty because I like the idea of the game, but everybody, you're just running from the police, which means all the action's happening in a sliver of the screen in a little rearview mi uh, mirror. I was like, yeah, that's not for me. No one's going to want to do that, I said. Well, I don't know if Kelly just listened to me or a bunch of other people, but ultimately, uh, we turned it down and it went on to be a huge hit uh, of that era. This game we should have turned down. Now, you might know this. This is, I'm going to be putting on the screen. Uh, this is called Tattoo Assassins. It's terrible. Uh, it was inspired by Mortal Kombat. The funny part about this game. Inspired, huh? Well, watch this. Watch this. This is, uh, she, she's based on Nancy Kerrigan, right? She's kind of like the ice skater girl from the 90s or whatever. And watch this. She's got a little toot action. A little toot action coming up. Look at her farting in the guy's face. And it, it, it's, it's just terrible. And, and you may not know this, but the guy who spearheaded this game was Bob Gale, who was the co-writer and co-producer of all the Back to the Future movies. And so we were like, holy shit, the Back to the Future guy, because we were Sony ImageSoft at the time, and they brought in the arcade cabinet. And they said, hey, do you guys want to have this cabinet um, and play it with your guys for a couple of weeks and then tell us if the controller sport says this looks awesome. Um, you know, do you guys want to play it for a couple of weeks? Then let's have a meeting and see if you guys want to do the home port. Can you imagine being that actress? Uh, and they say, no, no, make it as if you're... I don't know. I'm just, it's really bad. Place. The best part Jesus. was the QA guys were going around. They don't show it in this video, but the high concept of this is... Um, is is they all have these magical tattoos and i guess the tattoos can come to life or some such shit and if you get killed by a tattoo there's like this very mortal combat ripoff voice that goes tattooed and the testers were walking through the office all the time just Jesus. going tattooed it was tattooed. so it was great it was great <laughs> but we turned this down and i was really glad and then these are all up on the uh these are all up on the internet, and uh, you can enjoy them at your leisure. Okay, so we turned that down. That was a smart. That was a smart turn down. This was a dumb turn down. This game, I want to say, and I talked to Mike Arkin, who was a producer. I interviewed him on this show, and I want to say he said we had the opportunity to get this game, and which is called Metal Warriors, but at the time I think it was called like something Battle Droids. We had the opportunity to publish this and Zombies Ate My Neighbors because both of these were from Lucas uh, Games, if I remember, or at least somehow affiliated. And this was the best multiplayer Super Nintendo game I had ever played. It was split screen. You were a little teeny tiny dude. If you look at the screen right here, these are the big mechs. But when you got out of your mech, and you could get into lots of different vehicles and shit. I mean, you were like, if this is your mech, you were like this small, as small as the magnifying glass. And you had like a jet pack and all of this shit. Uh, it was awesome. Konami eventually ended up um, publishing it. And it's a great pickup if you're a collector or if you plug up your SNES and actually play split screen still. It's really fucking good. I don't know why we chose not to publish this because all of us who played it when they put it in front of us and said, Hey man, do you guys like it? We were all like, this is the best fucking thing we've ever fucking seen. But Sony said, no, Sony also said, no. Uh, I had a friend who worked over at what were they called? Uh, who are the guys who make power Rangers? Is it Bandai? Um, he worked over there in their TV department. Saban, that's right, Saturn Tubes. He says, hey, Jaffe, take these videos, check, check them out. It's this new show called Power Rangers. And I watched them and I said, this is horribly wonderful. It's like, this is a mix between Saved by the Bell and Godzilla. So I took it to Sony because they were looking for someone to make a game. And I said, we got to do this. And they're like, yeah, no, this is stupid. And not more than three months later, it was the biggest fucking thing going on. So we turned that down too. But I mean, it done, it, Sony won, Sony probably has the same batting average as, as every other company. You, you never fucking know. Uh, 
you know, what's going to fucking hit. We didn't just turn this down. This started six days in Fallujah, which is still, I think Rob the Mod got a copy of it, but uh, this is out now in early access. It's just all the multiplayer stuff. It's very early, but we were producing this for a while. And then somewhere along the lines, it wasn't internally produced somewhere along the lines. I want to say maybe it was upper management or something said, just cut this loose. I don't know if it's because development wasn't going well or if they thought it was going to become too controversial. But six days could have been uh, a Sony uh, PS exclusive at the time it was designed to be. Similarly, uh, this game, I, I can't even find a screenshot of this game. Right. This thing was crazy. This was a game uh, by a really good producer named Holly uh, Herzl. I think is how you pronounce her name. And she had the idea of doing bobblehead historical figures. And it was a Super Smash Brother game. But it was actually it's more like um, Power Stone. Right. Because it was like 3D. And you had uh, presidents and you had historical figures that weren't presidents, but they were like political figures. And they beat the fuck out of each other. And it was like, you know, they would, it was very, you know, I, at the time it was like Clinton was running against, I don't fucking know, but it was like, you know, he was doing his sound bites and, you know, Reagan was doing his crazy sound bites. And I think Bill Clinton could pull like a Monica Lewinsky secret attack and all this shit, put the enemy in a blue dress and everything, but it was fun and it was developed. I think we got past alpha with it. We got past alpha with it. And ultimately, I think it was Kaz Harai. I don't, it's like, had you, were you not aware? Because ultimately he saw it and said, yeah, we're not publishing that. And it was killed. And I'm like, you guys got to alpha and didn't know upper management wasn't, uh, wasn't interested. Cause it was, it was genuinely good. I'm surprised the developer, whoever they were, I forgot, didn't take it and run off and just reskin it and make it something else. But it was, it was really, really good. Ravno says Xbox would not buy Spider-Man because Xbox is not a movie production company. I heard they didn't want it, but I've said this before and I can't go into details. This is one of the things I'm not under NDA, but I won't talk about. Uh, I was staggered when I learned that Sony itself uh, had no interest in Spider-Man. Some of the people did executives did, but a lot of the executives were like, no, why do we want that? And maybe it's because they were used to all the kind of average Spider-Man games like Web of Destiny, which I liked, but, I'm, you know, it didn't it wasn't some mega bestseller. Maybe they were thinking of it like that. I don't know. But thank God they ended up making it because uh, Miles best superhero game ever and normal Spider-Man number one is pretty fucking good, too. L.A. Noir. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, I wanted to fucking uh, cancel L.A. Noir before it probably had any code written. This was funded by Sony Santa Monica for a long time. And here's the reason I wanted to cancel it, right? I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't my... But while being done by Rockstar? No, no, no. So uh, Brennan McNamara, who directed it, had done The Getaway, if I remember, right? And this was his new game. And for some reason, Sony Europe didn't want to work with him or didn't want to make this game. I don't fucking know why, but he found himself in Santa Monica with Alan Becker and everyone. And Alan was like, okay, yeah, we'll green light your game. And I'm like, cool. I love, you know, he was clearly very inspired by, um, LA confidential, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like spent, I don't know how many months I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm exaggerating the amount of months, but it was like, he spent six months coming to LA and doing what he was calling white papers, uh, on LA in the thirties. Like he, it was like, it's like, dude, you're not James Cameron making Titanic. No one is going to notice if the fucking texture on the wallpaper of a hotel that was actually there in 1932 is the actual texture of the wallpaper type. I mean, it's just, it's just, it was just, it was just sort of, you know, ego masturbation. Um, and, and, and I was just like, I don't know if the game's going to be any good or not, but with this guy leading it, I'm worried that it's just going to be this black hole of fucking wasted money. And so, I mean, I, again, I didn't, I moved on. I was doing other things. It wasn't like I was um, involved in this game, but every time I saw it and I was asked by my bosses, you know, what do you think? I'm like, I don't know what the game is still. What is this fucking thing? And eventually enough people at Sony must've thought the same thing and uh, moved on. And eventually Rockstar picked it up. Uh, apparently it was a very difficult game to work on. And then I know McNamara who I've never met, uh, but I hear he's very challenging to work with, which is not a bad thing or a good thing. Uh, I don't know how he 
personifies that, but he was doing a game with the name Whore of the Orient, which I just thought was a, a great game that you know would have been changed, but a great title. But uh, that apparently he was hit with a lot of uh, accusations of abuse and toxicity and whatnot. And the whole thing kind of um, uh, got shut down. L.A. Noir turned out to be a pretty cool game, says Last Line. Yeah, a lot of people liked it, but I could see where Jaffe was coming from with how anal the dude sounded. I mean, I, I appreciate that level of passion. I wasn't like mocking the guy, but I was sort of questioning why isn't there anybody on the team that's going, okay, Brendan, this is too much. It's like, I get what you're doing, but let's play our cards strategically. Let's pick our battles. Does it really matter if it's the wallpaper? Does it really matter? Do we need to spend a million dollars for that? I, I don't understand. Uh, anyway, so that was another one uh, we turned was it down. PS3 for the time? I want to say it was PS3, but I don't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain. I'm almost certain. Demon Souls is probably the most famous that Sony turned down. Uh, this was Shuei. <laughs> Again, Shuei is one of the smartest. I just love this guy. I'm not saying Shu loves me. Demon she, Souls? I, yeah, the first one. Uh, I'm not saying Shu doesn't love me. I'm saying Shu's, Shu's so hard to read. They I don't. Turned it down. They didn't. Yeah, they did. I'll tell you a story. No, Demon I, Souls. Oh, okay, I'm wrong. Let's move on. Ricardo says I'm wrong. Demon Souls was turned down. It got picked up by Atlas in America and I uh, forget who published it in Europe, but they brought it. They did turn it down in America. Shuhei said, I don't think anyone's going to fucking play it. It was published by a Atlas in the U.S. And who published and it in Europe? In right. Europe. Right. So in look it up, Shu turned it down and he says that he regrets turning it down. Gavin, you need to come on my goddamn show, buddy. Gavin's producer. He says, I'm agreeing with you, Jaffe. I was in those meetings. He's a... A uh, producer over in the UK that used to work for Sony. Gavin, where are you working now? Are you still doing games? But yes, but I, I know I know uh, from software had to change from Demon Souls to Dark Souls. Well, ju yeah, just trust me, it's true. I mean, you can look. You know, that's what that's what that's like something Trump would say. Just trust me. Just trust me. How dare you? Um, but um, it is true. Look it up. But the the bigger point though is that you know, look, I don't think a lot of people would not have made the decision she made. I think it was a correct decision at the time because it was so weird that nobody knew what the fuck kind of thing it was, I imagine. Can you imagine if, if the Souls series had become a first, uh, a first party exclusive title? Can you imagine? I mean, my God. I mean, it still mostly was, but still. Um, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. But no, Shu, I was just saying, I, I, Shu is one of the smartest guys in the business. I, I, I hate... And I, I don't. I wanted to say I hate how they've treated Shu at Sony. I don't know if they've treated Shu badly. I just think that it's weird he doesn't have more influence at this point, given how good he is. Um, but but everybody, you know, if you know, everybody would have missed it. Certainly Shu did, and you can't really fucking blame him for it. But you know, it is what it is. American McGee's Oz, we turned down. That came to us. American came into the office. I had never met him before. I was like, oh, cool. I've heard of this guy. I played a little bit of Alice. And he gave us a demo. And we played it a little bit. I think we had already done God of War at the point, And I don't remember why we turned it down other than to say maybe it wasn't bad. Maybe we just kind of felt that we perhaps had, you know, too many games like this with Medieval and Mark of Cree and God of War. I, I don't remember. Or maybe... You know, the tech guys did due diligence diligence and said, yeah, this is they're not going to be able to pull off what what they want. I, I don't know why, but this did. I did see a demo of this and, and I like the guy's imagination. I always have. And uh, so that was another one we turned down. American McGee's Oz. This game, it's not Tornado Outbreak. This is the one. This is the one that blew my fucking mind. Not this game, but the first time I ever saw a video game, which is now very tropey and there's tons of cell phone games, blah, 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 where you played a tornado and you were going around picking up trailer parks and throwing them around and people and building. It was awesome. It was a PS1 game. And I think it was called Tornado Alley, if I remember. And I don't know. Uh, I need to find out one day uh, why it was that um we never continued past the pre-alpha stage on this but uh it wasn't tornado outbreak uh but it was it was really fucking cool so that was a game we turned down as well i don't have much information other than to tell you i was absolutely 
fucking stunned that we turned that game down. Uh, this game, and this is what I always talk about real quick uh, with Xbox, all the um, failures that Sony, that Xbox is going through right now first party. The problem with, with Xbox is they're too big at this point to be failing at the level like a bunch of beginners when it comes to production, which is what they clearly are. But this is a game, The Diabolical Adventures of Tobu. This must have been in production at Sony Foster City for three or four years. It was very Ghibli inspired and you were this boy with these wings or Da Vinci wings. I don't fucking know. It was kind of like Mario 64 meets Panzer Dragoon, I guess, but it wasn't on a rail and they just never really knew what the game was. And they were in production forever. And it kind of became this running joke. It's like, what the fuck is your game? It wasn't even that, like in the chat, Fupy says it was too early for artsy games. Kind of. I mean, remember Tale of the Sun? That came out for, you know. But, but a lot of it was, honestly, if Sony knew then what they know now, or if Xbox knew, knew now what they will know if they stick with it, now you don't go into Sony and say, I want to make a game and the most junior executive will say, what do you do? What's the loop? What are the loops? What's the gameplay? Back then, and I think it's the same, it must be the same at Xbox. Now, all these rookie mistakes, uh, shit like this was greenlit and allowed to stay in uh, production forever. Psycho 5.0. We all know this. I don't know if you know the story. This was Santa Monica's game after Connecticut. I remember Shannon Studstill, the producer, called me. I was at jury duty. And she's like, hey, do you think it's bad we can't get out of the car? Because Grand Theft Auto had come out. The first Grand Theft Auto 3. You know, suddenly everything changed. This was kind of like a um, crazy taxi with urban funk sensibilities, blah, blah, blah. She's like, people on the team are starting to talk that, you know, you can't get out of the car. Is this going to be viable? I says, I don't think so. I think the minute you have somebody in a car now, because of Grand Theft Auto in this kind of game, there's all these new expectations that have been set. And so eventually this got shut down as well. And there's probably been many since that time that have been turned down uh, that I don't even know about, but it's amazing. It's fucking amazing.